Hey, what's up everybody? On this episode of Roscoe's Reef, the MP10 has been in the tank for a little under a month now, so time to show you the unboxing and give you some first impressions on how the pump is doing in the tank. So let's get to it. Welcome to Roscoe's Reef. Okay, so as I stated in my uh, video on the uh, Williamsport Frag Swap, my son Scott had won this in their raffle. It's a Vortec MP10 from Ecotech. Um, this is basically the unboxing and what my thoughts on this pump are from uh, having it up for about a little under a month. The first thing you do when you open it up is you find package and the package is the instruction book basically listing what's inside of it and giving you this warranty registration card now when I did register this pump I found out that this is a three-year-old pump so it's kind of behind the times as far as all the new ones that are out but this is the experience I had with this particular one so after going through the book that no one ever reads um, we get on to what's actually in the box. Uh, in this bag, you have um, the spacer. It's a rubber spacer. It's kind of like a, a gel spacer, and it comes in handy uh, when putting it on. Here are the Velcro strips that you put on the controller if you need it to, to mount it to your cabinet. There's a spacer, and it has the um, zip ties and also the little plastic clips that go on your aquarium so that you can actually zip tie the cable from the driver to the dry side of the pump and it came in pretty handy okay so moving right along we dive into the box and this is going to be the wet side of the pump it comes with this nice little foam um, cover for it in case you have NEMS or you want to prevent something else from getting sucked in the pump um, it's got a nice ta uh, soft kind of pad on it that it will sit on your glass so it won't scratch it. The foam itself kind of fits rather loosely. I don't know whether it's just because of the age of this pump or whether this is the way they're made, but I wound up not using it at all because um, it, it just came, it just blows off the pump. So now, um, moving on to the dry side, I couldn't get over for, for the size of this motor that <laughs> this thing is, is rather heavy. So I just couldn't get over the, the weight of it. But uh, I was pretty excited about actually trying to, you know, finally getting to use one of these after a while of being in the hobby. So really didn't care about the, the weight of it. Um, this is the, the Ecotech, uh, the Eco Smart Driver and you can program in all different kinds of modes from uh, you know, pulsing modes, lagoon modes. Uh, you can shut it down and feed your tank. It's got a feed mode on it. This, of course, is the power brick. Everybody knows what these are. So now here I am at the tank, and here's the old Jabo uh, wave maker that I have in the uh, tank, and I'm gonna remove this and put the new pump right in its place. Now trying to remove this, I found that this was a little bit of a chore because the suction cup had sucked to the glass really well. And you can see it's been there a while because now the magnet side is still holding onto the glass. And this thing was covered with coral and algae. Even though I do clean them like every three months or so, and it still had coral and algae on it. Now removing the magnet, you can see how the glass is dirty, and it gives me a chance, once again, to use MagFloat to clean it off. I love this thing. And this is not a review about a MagFloat, but I couldn't pass up the chance to show you how very easy it is to remove dirt or algae from the glass with the MagFloats. Mm. 
no time at all. And you gotta remember that this is quite old, this knife of love. I've had it a while and the blade is still sharp and still working. I'm still on my first blade with this. And it does short work of that algae that was on the glass. Okay, so now it's time to place the dry side in first. Uh, my tank always had these clips and I never could figure out what they are because I've never owned an Ecotec pump and opening it I found out, okay, this is what was on it. It was these plastic clips. So I just replaced the one and put it where the uh, one had been sitting there prior and I reused the one in the back. So. Now here's the dry side in place. I would recommend putting them on and zipping them in, not really tight, but just tight enough to hold because you may want to fine tune your adjustment after you're done. And you can see it's not really that hard to do. You just lay it in there and put the zip tie through it and pull it tight. Now here it is the with the pump in and the wet side in place. Uh, one thing they, they say is to give it a little shake, make sure all the air bubbles are out of it, as well as anything that you may use. That foam cover has a lot of air bubbles in it, so make sure you shake them out really well. So now here's the actual, I'll show you what I mean. As you can see, a lot of bubbles come out of this piece. And you don't want to put, turn that on because you'll just have to be sucking air out of this and blowing bubbles into your tank. So you can see pretty much one-handed you can get this on and uh, kind of should have taken that as a warning sign that if it was that easy going on, it will be that easy for it to blow off. Now here's that booklet that no one ever reads until it gets stuck and they have to use it. And that's exactly what I did here, even though I didn't read up too good on when I first started on how to set this up, on how to set the different modes. And it's a good thing to do when you look at the instruction book, actually learn how to set these modes. You know, everybody knows that you turn the dial one way and it turns the power up and power, turn the other way and it'll turn the power down. And the different light indicators will indicate the different modes that you're in, which is really good and helps out. But I would recommend, you know, give it a little chance and read the booklet as far as how to set the modes up and maybe watch a video or two on how to do it. Um, I finally get it working and I was surprised that the MP10 um, was actually strong. Uh, this in, in combination with my gyre gave me a nice wave pattern and uh, really moves water around my tank really well. The only downside to this whole setup was when I first initially put the pump on, it was loud. I mean, it was really loud. So this is where I located it between the wall and my stand. It fit just perfect. I didn't need the Velcro to, to put it on. Um, when the pump was running, I found that it made a lot of noise and contacting Ecotech and also reading some of the forums, I found out that there is a break-in period for these uh, pumps. And also if, if it doesn't work its way out within a couple of days to give it a bath in vinegar and water and give it a you know, good cleaning, and that should eliminate the sound. My impression of the pump, it's well worth the money. Um, this is the MP10 and it is moving water like crazy in my tank in combination with the gyre, as you can see by the wave. Uh, downside is that the foam blows off of it and you can't um, move it to a direction that you want it to blow in. It's pretty much set in one spot and cones out from that. But everybody knows these pumps and they're well worth it. You know, and I love that I'm using it. So um, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you are a first time viewer, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notifications. If you're returning, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, this is Scott, and I'll see you soon around the reef tank.
Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe.